In this section, we want to start talking about probability, building on some ideas that are eventually going to become the basis for all of the inferential statistics that we take care of uh, later in this course. There are a few basic facts, properties, or laws of statistics that we want to keep in mind. The first is that probabilities are always between 0 and 1. Or if we wanted to think of those in percents, probabilities are always between 0% and 100%. So even though we're talking about probabilities, we still typically report those results as decimal values. So something between 0 and 1, but just keep in mind that relates to between 0 and 100%. So if you're calculating a probability and you end up with a negative value, or you end up with something larger than 100% or larger than 1, um, that should just be a flag that goes off in your head to let you know something's gone wrong with your calculations. A probability of zero means the event or outcome that we're considering absolutely will not occur. So if something has a zero percent chance of occurring, that doesn't mean it's very unlikely. It means that will not occur. And then a probability of 1 doesn't mean that the event is very likely to occur. It means that the event absolutely will occur. So 0 and 1 are the absolutes. Absolutely will not occur, absolutely will occur, and then everything in there is some scale between very likely to occur and very unlikely to occur. So in practical applications, we very rarely have a probability of 0 or 1. Um, we'll usually get something that's very close to 0, very close to 1, if we have an event that we're very certain is going to occur. But there's few things that, we're, that are guaranteed to occur. The list of all possible outcomes that could occur, or that we want to consider, is called the sample space. So anytime we reference the sample space, what we're saying is the list of all possible outcomes that could occur. <clears throat> so if, for instance, we're talking about a family with two children, there are a few different outcomes in the sample space. Their first child could be a boy and the second a girl. They could have a girl first and then a boy. They could have two girls or they could have two boys. So this would be our sample space for a family with two children, listing all of the different possible outcomes that could occur. An event is any collection of those outcomes in the sample space. So for instance, we could write something like, the probability of a family having exactly one boy. Or we could look at the probability of a family having exactly two girls. Or the probability of having two kids of the same gender. So each of those would be different outcomes we're considering. Exactly one boy, two girls, two kids of the same gender. So the probability of some event A occurring can be written as P of A. So anytime we use this notation, we mean the probability that whatever event A is, again, for instance, having two girls could occur. We can also look at the probability that some event A will not occur. And we could write that as the probability of A bar. And that can be calculated as 1 minus the probability that event A will occur. And we refer to this probability, the probability of A bar, as the complement of A. Or rather, A bar is the complement of A. And calculating this is the probability <coughs> that the complement of A will occur. 
So if we know the probability of this event occurring, we can also calculate the probability of its complement. In cases where we have equally likely outcomes, then we can calculate the probability of our given event A as the total number of ways A can occur divided by the number of possible outcomes. So if we use that idea of equally likely outcomes, in this case, the different variations that we can have for having two children, those events are equally likely if we assume there's a 50-50 chance of having a boy or a girl, then the probability of having exactly one boy we have two different scenarios where a family can have exactly one boy. So that would be two out of all four possibilities. Or we have a probability of one half or 50%. The probability of having two girls, looking back at our sample space, there's only one way that can occur. So that probability is one fourth or 25%. And the probability of having two kids of the same gender, there are two different ways that event can occur. We can have two girls or two boys. So there's two ways that event can occur out of four possible outcomes. So again, we have a probability of one half or 50%. A trick with this is though, making sure that we verify this condition applies before using this rule. So this rule applies if our outcomes are equally likely. What we run into are situations where people will assume events are equally likely when that's not actually true. So for instance, if we ask a question like, will it rain tomorrow? So we could simplify that problem into one of two outcomes, either it will rain or it won't rain. So if there's only two possibilities, it's a 50-50 chance. But that would mean that every other day it rains, which obviously isn't true. So that probability isn't really 50-50. Those aren't equally likely outcomes. There are all sorts of factors that affect whether or not it's going to rain. Similarly, we could ask a question like, will I get in a car wreck? So again, there are two outcomes. Either you get in a wreck or you don't. But again, if the probability was 50-50, that would mean that every single time you drive your car somewhere, well, every other time you drive your car somewhere, you'd get in a wreck. Hopefully that's not true. Hopefully that probability is very small. So again, we don't have equally likely outcomes. Or we could ask a question like, will I pass this class? So again, two outcomes in each of these scenarios if we kind of simplify the problem. We have two different outcomes. Someone could assume those events are equally likely, but that means you have a 50-50 chance of passing this class, that it's not dependent on how much time and effort you put into it. It would also mean that if you're taking four classes this semester, then you're probably gonna fail at least two of those, which again, hopefully isn't true. So that's kind of um, a trick to probability, something that people will take advantage of to try to sell you on something that's not true or just they'll use some mistaken logic to get to that. Just because we have two outcomes doesn't automatically assume events are equally likely. To use this rule we need to make sure that we do have those equally likely outcomes first.